So hello, um, uh, today gonna be brief as well. I will talk about what's happened during the white fly season in, in Alabama. I wanna, my goal here is just for uh, people to understand what is white fly and what is cows in here. Most of people already know what is the problem, but when this problem will come and how can we have some manage and what we are doing. So in short, I will start like explaining what is white fly. So the sweet potato white fly, there are several different species. The most one that we use is the that we are used to is the Vemisia tabasi and uh, the vegetable crops that they affect the most are curbids and tomatoes. But you can find those insects in many other crops, even in your garden. So for vegetables, like I said, cucurbits and tomatoes, uh, what they cause is usually damage in the leaf. Most common in uh, in uh, cucurbits like zucchini is the silver leaf. As you can see, leaves of those plants turn uh, into uh, there we go. It's turning into red into those uh, silver color, and uh, that impact plants photosynthesis. Consequently, will impact you. You don't know how much it's going to impact you. It's going to depend on the damage. So there is like a score that you can give it of the damage, but always controlling the insect will minimize that damage that the insect can cause. Here is just for you to see what's happening, a better look on the plants. So a normal plant and a silvering plant. So you can see that it's literally turned uh, silver, losing the green color. Consequently, it will uh, affect yield by the end because of uh, reduction in photosynthesis rates. Also, those insects can transmit the virus. There are several virus registered for um, cucurbit crops, yellow, yellow squash, zucchini, tomatoes, several of those are reported in Alabama's. All oh, they're not. We are working with Cassie, Dr. Ed Sikora. Uh, we are working to identify all those virus that we have problem here and try to select cultivars that are more efficient against or, or more resistant against those virus. Uh, so that's the main problem that white flies, silver leaves are, is a problem on cucurbits, uh, a little bit in tomatoes, but in tomatoes, you're gonna see plants curling the leaves more because of heavy populations. But then the white fly transmitted virus is the major problem uh, of this insect because of those virus, it's gonna can devastate the crop. Just for you guys to see uh, an idea of the damage of this crop in about two years ago, um, there was it was reported uh, in the southeast a loss of about fifty million of dollars just because of uh, the virus transmitted by this uh, insect. So population, pesticide, and those are the problems that we have. So we have ideal conditions for the insect to develop. A lot of pesticide application create resistance, and then the grow the the insect can like replicate it and spread across not only Alabama, but the Southeastern US. So just keep in mind, this is not a problem only in Alabama. It's a problem that is in Georgia and Florida. So for you to understand why we have that severe white fly pressure, basically what's happened is the white fly migrates from South Florida as we get warmer conditions during summer to Center Florida to North Florida, Southeast Alabama, Southwest Georgia. And that's when we have our problem. So this happened across the summer. So as we have the summer going up, the temperatures increase, the white flies will go this direction. And that's when we have the problem. So this is also caused because they have hosts during the entire season, during this entire period. So we have the row crop, cottons. White fly also goes to cotton leaves or to cotton plants. Then when we have cotton defoliation, the white flies migrate. So if you look where we have most of the cotton plants is in this area. So as we defoliate it, we're gonna, the cotton, we're gonna have the white fly population also in this area of the state. So that's where we have our problem. Uh, so when they come, like I said, during the summer, so they come basically by the end of the summer, cotton starts to be defoliated at this time here. And that's when we have our peak of the white fly population. So here we have white fly in adults per trap during month of the year. And that's when it's happened an overlap of our crop. And then when we have cucurbits and tomatoes, we have our problem. This is also a problem for row crops, but mainly for our vegetable crops. 
So just an overview of what's happened last year compared to this year in Alabama. Uh, in this first graph here, I don't want you guys to worry about what's going on in the y-axis because here is one unit and here is another unit. So don't worry about that, but look about the trend. So we did not have any, any problem of white fly in 2021 until first of, uh, until actually until the second week of September. Here, it was the same thing. I'm not just not showing the data. Remember back in August, we had a lot of rainfall events. Rainfall knocked the white fly down. They usually, uh, when do they have uh, rainfall events, they usually migrate to, uh, they don't migrate, they are knocked down. But the ones inside uh, Jeremy Pickens greenhouse, they stay alive and then they come to our field. So Jeremy, we need your help. Um, then when they have those uh, peak of white flies is during the month of September. So here it's already show our first action, planting date, selecting the best planting date is ideal. So as you can see, it was a trend in 2021 and 2022, a peak of white fly in the mid of September. So if you can avoid that planting date, if you are in South Alabama, that's gonna be the first action that you need to do to minimize crop loss. The white fly population changes, of course, year to year. I will have this data, the same data both for both years. So you can see what's happening in both years. Here, the goal was just to show the trend that we had. And what we can do, like I said, planting date is the best option. If you look at uh, in your first, uh, in the first, in 2021, the planting date would be before August 25th. So you plant it before August 25th and you can avoid populations like those one in the video passing here. As you can see, the white flies this year are um, in the leaves, but plants are already big enough. They're already breeding, as you can see here. So the white fly transmitted virus in cucurbits are not a problem. Uh, not that are not a problem. It's a lower, less problem when plants are big. But look this number of white flies you can find per, per leaf. And it's taking only one white fly to transmit the virus. Look, our populations are very large in our per leaf. Imagine when you have that in one leaf, imagine the entire plant and imagine the entire field. So these are just a couple leaf, couple plants that I select. And as you can see, they fly out of the plants. So the second action is gonna be cultivar selection. If you are planting um, yellow squash or zucchini, we identify that grand prize, gold prize and lioness, they are the cultivars for yellow squash with, oops, with, with um, less, uh, more resist, it's not resistant, but less with more tolerance because so far we don't have any cultivar of yellow squash and zucchini resistant to the insect or neither for the virus transmitted by the insect. So those ones, grand prize, gold prize, Linus were the ones who performed the best as far as yellow squash, while the SV0914, the Paycheck and the Spinalist Beauty were the cultivar from zucchini that performed the best during the white fly season. Remember, those are recommendations for the white fly season that's happened in the fall. If you are planting in the spring, those two crops, there is a different recommendation because as we have an increase in the resistance or intolerance to the insect and the virus, we will have a drop in, in yield. But it's still, it's better to plant a resistant, uh, resistant variety than the one that yield the best. So keep that in mind for this selecting for the spring and fall season. This is fall season. Tomatoes, there are more. The major problem that we have for tomatoes as far as, tom as the yellow, um, as the White fly tra vi transmitted virus is the tomato ye yellow leaf curl virus. Uh, there are several varieties resistant as far as determinate and indeterminate uh, tomatoes. So selecting the, pro the correct one is the first step for you, for, for, the, for the grower. Also selecting planting dates. Uh, during the season, uh, what we, we are recommending is the use of roll cover and plastic mulching. As you can see here, we have different uh, roll covers uh, as a pest exclusion. Dr. A is our expert on the area, and he can say that it's important for you to do uh, roll covers to minimize the damage. You don't have to do a spring program during that period, uh, uh, but you need to pay attention on when to remove that cover because 
If you are planting yellow squash and zucchini using row covers, removing uh, the plants can grow fast under that cover, and then you're going to have plantings falling from both sides because they don't have uh, enough, they get spoiled and don't have enough uh, anchoring, so they don't sustain in the soil. So keep that in mind. We did a trial to compare row cover versus no cover, and as you can see here, row cover increased our yield, and that's because allowed an increase in biomass accumulations. So keeping that in mind, row cover, yes, were the best option for us when we compare to no cover with spring program. So that's what we are trying uh, to educate growers to use. We have seen larger growers using that, which is the harder than uh, smaller growers. So smaller growers, that's a very good option and cost benefit for you, for you guys. Also using plastic mulching, we have recommended using silver plastic when compared to the white plastic used uh, installed during the summer. So silver plastic also helps to minimize the white fly population. So perhaps combining row cover and silver uh, plastic is, is gonna be our best option so far. As far as the spring program, we have some products that we are recommending or that it's available uh, right now that we have seen. Uh, the top three here is our best selection so far. They are uh, considered new in the market, but they have been there for about a year or two, maybe more, but they, uh, they are the one who's showing best control, which means that there is not much resistance yet. But if growers continue to do spring every other day during the white fly season or twice a week or three times a week, like you may control your white fly on that day. But under our population where we are counting per leaf more like than 200 insects, like what about tomorrow? They will come back. So you can make this become this, but then they will be back for this stage again in the next two days. So keep that in mind. Spring program, yes, it's a good approach. You can control it, but what about tomorrow? So the take home that I would like to say for you guys today is that white fly, they are white flies are a pest for vegetable production. Don't get it wrong; they can devastate crops. Manage, management is required, and so far, what we have the best to recommend and is planning ahead, planting dates. Uh, variety selection and the rotation of a row cover with a plastic mulching and then keeping your spring program might be your best options. Thank you.